us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter your rest yeah. so as the ancient band yeah, lead us along eternal highway the footsteps of Jesus we want to enter your rest there's a part not meant for mortal men there's a part not meant for flesh and for blood Holy Ghost Holy Ghost hold my hands hold my hands oh, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I would like us to pray. Precious Father, thank you for another opportunity to serve your children. Thank you for your supply of grace and favors unto us. Thank you for deliverances. Thank you for healings. Thank you for restorations that you have dished out to your children through this transmission, through these ministrations. Thank you for healings. We ask, O oh God, that today, once again, that you will do wonders in the midst of your people. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Um, I would like us to quickly turn our Bible to 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. We will consider verses 21 and 22. For Israel and Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. Today we'll be looking at the marks, marks of a civilian. marks of a civilian how to know a civilian in God's Dodan Barak marks of a civilian in our texts We noted that uh, the Jews, the people of God, are always surrounded surrounded by hostile enemies hostile neighbors. The way 
it is with the physical literal Jews today is the same way it is to anybody that is a child of God, anybody that is soundly and genuinely born again. Immediately you give your life to Jesus Christ. You are quickly and immediately surrounded by hostile, cruel, determined enemies who are ready to drag you, if care is not taken, away from grace to disgrace. They are ever ready to do that. Israel is a nation that has suffered so much attacks and invasions many a times from nations that are far more powerful than them. But Israel is still in existence till tomorrow. And so our text, 1 Samuel 17, verse 21, says, For Israel and the Philistines, in this context, it is the Philistines, in some other context here and there, you will see Moab contending with Israel, negotiating to rout Israel, invade Israel. Some other times you will see Ammonites, Amorites. At times it is Assyrians, Syrians, Edomites. Their own brother, their own brother, Edom, Babylonians, Egyptians, Israel is always surrounded by hostile enemies. Every genuine child of God that is sincerely and soundly born again is always in the midst of enemies. And because we are always in the midst of enemies. The Lord Jesus Christ gave us a calling to come and be his child. And that call is also to come and be a soldier. Our Lord Jesus Christ is not a civilian. He is the great grand commander in chief of the universal armed forces. All the forces in the entire universe is under his command. They are under his back and call. Our Lord Jesus Christ is not a novice when it comes to battles, when it comes to wars, when it comes to wrestlings. He is not a novice at all. He has never lost any battle. So our text said, for Israel and the Philistines, had put the battle in array, army against army. 
Now, if in the days of uh, David, it was army against army, why is the church of Jesus Christ full of bloody civilians? God, Dodan Barak is full of bloody civilians. It is not everybody you see in the barrack that is a soldier. It is not everybody you see in the military academy uh, is there to be trained. Some are just visitors. Some may just be living around, around the barrack, inside the barrack. But they are not soldiers. The same thing applies to the issue of today's Christianity. It is not everybody that is in the church that is actually a Christian. It is not everybody that bears the name Christian that is actually a Christian. It is not everybody that carries the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in his lips or her lips, Jesus, 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 everywhere, every time that is actually a Christian. It is not everybody that is baptized or not baptized that is actually a Christian. Several men of God, women of God, I, I said several of them, several of us are not actually Christians. So we are like those men and women out there in the literal, physical, Jordan barracks who are not soldiers, but they are always in the barrack. Always in the barrack, always in the church premises, always around the pit, always preaching, always shouting, always even praying. But this is a bloody civilian praying. But the rule of the game should be when the battle is put in array, it should be army against army, not army against civilians. It's not army against civilians. It should be army against army. Before I go away from verse 21, 1 Samuel 17, let me remind you God is not calling any of us to come to be uh, become the police of the cross. As wonderful as that calling may be, it is not to be police. You. And God is not calling us to come and become a vigilante. No, I've not read anywhere, I've not seen anywhere, and I'm sure I won't see it anywhere. Where the Bible, the Word of God said, uh, uh, you should be a, a vigilante of the cross or police of the cro uh, cross. He said, soldiers of the cross, soldiers of the cross, not vigilante. As militant as they may appear, mm -hmm. they are not soldiers. The battle. The war that Satan is arranging and putting in array against the body of Christ in Nigeria and the global war that has been declared against Christianity, no civilian can survive it. Anybody that pampers himself, pampers herself, cannot survive the arrangement of hell right now. In Satan's barrack, in Satan's military academy. You cannot find any civilian there. Satan does not use civilians. It is the church of Jesus Christ that is producing men and producing women to be civilians. How can Jesus Christ, the captain of our salvation, the captain of our salvation, use civilians, bloody civilians, Novice everywhere to counter the end time, end time satanic forces that are well trained and trimmed and armed and endowed 
to crush the church. What who will Jesus use now to counter the arrangement of hell? Army against an army. Have you seen that? It is army against army. Not army against vigilante. Not army against police. As wonderful as the, uh, the calling of uh, policemen and women are, it's not police people, police people that can handle this thing. They are training. And the military trainings are not the same. Police handle civil, civic matters. Civil and civic matters. That is their calling. They deal with civilians. That's police. They deal with civilians. Okay? But military is army against army. To be a soldier is also to conform to the soldiers and army of other nations. That's the difference. So, if you are trying to become a vigilante in this end time, I want to quickly counsel you to please repent and go away. Go away from God's military academy. In verse 22, or, yes, 22. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage. Do you know what he did? And ran into the army. Everything you hear about David began in this place. You can't do exploits in the Lord. You cannot do exploits in your own time as a civilian. You have to drop your own carriage, luggages, scenes, life of a civilian. You have to drop it in the hand of the keeper of carriages. There are people that keep carriages. Drop your carriage. The way David dropped his own carriage, when he dropped those carriages, you know what he did? He ran into the army to be able to redeem the wasted years. The years he wasted being civilian. He ran. He did not walk. He ran to meet up. He ran to be able to beat time, to beat time. And you, you are dragging your feet in this end time. I will soon show you the giants of end time that have been mocking the church, insulting the church. And Jesus Christ, the captain of our salvation, has no soldier, no competent, combatant, trigger ready army to send, to confront the army of the Philistines. Since the rule of the game is army against army. Who are who will Jesus send now? Just look around. Just look at your own life. Are you a soldier enough? Can you endure hardness? Do you know that war is grievous? Are you aware of what your calling in Christ will attract to you? It is not a business a civilian can do at all. Marks of a civilian. I will soon give you a rundown and I will be through with you for today. But allow me to lay this foundation. David dropped his courage. Mm. David left his courage in the hand of the keeper of courage. I am so happy that there are people who have found ministry in keeping luggages. I don't belong there myself. Just like Saul, before he became Paul, Satan made Saul a rag bearer, a rag bearer. When people wanted to stone Stephen, they tore their garments, everything became rag. It was 
on the feet of Saul that they dropped it. And Saul was so happy fulfilling that calling. Rag bearer. Everybody that tears his garment, Saul will keep it for him. Until Jesus Christ met him. He left that useless ministry and joined the army and became a soldier, a force to reckon with in his own time. You are coming out of a civilian life after today. I tell you, you are coming out of a vigilante life. I tell you, this message will bring serious conviction in your spirit. You can't be normal again after today. How can you be carrying carriages up and down in a time like this? He left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army. Then he did something and came and saluted his brethren. He saluted his brethren. Paul wrote, Apostle Paul, in several of his uh, epistles, Philippians, Romans, he said, salute the saints. Angels saluted the saints. Gabriel hmm, came to Mary and gave Mary a salutation, knowing that it is not easy to be a child of God in this hostile world. It's not easy. Heaven knows. Hell knows. This world system knows that it is not easy to be righteous in an unrighteous generation. It is not easy to be holy in an unholy generation. It is not easy to be humble in a proud and arrogant generation. It's not easy. So anytime you meet a saint anywhere, my friend, salute the saint, especially those that have been in the army before you join the army. You should salute them. Salute them all. Doff your car for the old soldiers who have been in the army for years, even before you were born physically. Talk more of being born again. They have been in the army. They have been in war fronts. They have been in the forefront of battles. They have waged all manner of wars with sickness and diseases, with criticism, with lack even with surplus, with barrenness, with fruitfulness. They have been in battles with de demons and forces of backsliding and hindrances and limitations, and they have been pushing and pushing some of them 45 years in the battle. David was a, a very wise recruit. Immediately he ran into the army. He had his car for men that have been in the army before them. I believe something that looked like discipleship. Saluting them to learn from them. Saluting them to submit to them. Saluting them to, to allow them teaching strategies and, uh, you know, how to be a soldier. David was a very wise man. He saluted them. Now, um, verse 23, and as he talked with them, you know, we were just making inquiries. He began to ask questions. That's the meaning of as he talked with them. He was not in the army before. He has run. He has joined the army. He needed to ask questions. He was probing matters. And he said, why? Why 
is everybody inside the caves. Brigadier this one, Colonel this one, Corporal this one, Sergeant this one, Flight Lieutenant this one. Why are you in the cave? Why is everybody shaking and urinating in his trousers? What is going on? As he was taught, he talked with them. Behold, they came up the champion. Mm. They came up the champion. Champion from the side of darkness. The side of the people of God had no champion. Let me tell you what happened. It was a great deception that played on Israel. The day King Saul was coronated the first king of Israel. It was a national event. National event. Uh -huh. The entire tribes of Israel gathered. Saul anointed him, uh, Samuel anointed Saul and introduced him to the entire nation and said, here is the king that God has given to you. And testimony carried it that in the entire land of Israel, from shoulder bled like this, upward, Saul was taller than everybody. That looked like giant, isn't it? Aha! No matter how tall any man walks in Israel, you can at best bury your head in Saul's armpit like this. From shoulder blade upward, the man was taller than everybody. People said, all oh, hell the king, all oh, hell the king, all oh, hell the king. Saul was carrying himself as a giant, as a giant, until Saul came to the Olympic. Saul came to the Olympic and saw the enemy giant, Goliath. It was that day that it dawned on Saul and dawned on the entire Israel that their giant was actually a dwarf, that their giant was actually a local champion. Everybody ran. I want to ask you a question. Can you like this, a product of church, represent Christ in the Olympic game of politics? Hmm. You've not seen their champion. You may appear a champion, you may look like a champion and talk like a champion in your local level until you come to the political Olympic. Come to the military Olympic. And say you are a Christian. Can your righteousness survive in the Olympic? Can your holiness survive in the Olympic? Can your integrity be maintained and survive in the Olympic? You can maintain it in the local, 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 local uh, four world church where you are. What about the Olympic? Now, the champion of the Philistines appear. The champion of the people of Israel ran into the cave. Have you seen it now? Saul, who thought he was a champion, he was actually a champion, a representative of the people, a giant for that matter, from shoulder blade. He was taller than everybody in the entire land. Can you imagine that kind of stature? It was a great stature. That nobody knew that that stature was equivalent to Dwarf until he got to Olympic. That's why when David ran into the army, he said, what's going on here? Why is everybody shaking? Why are you shaking on your boots? Why are you eating on your trousers? 
Where is your AK-49? And where are, where are the shooters and gunners? Where are the jet fighters? Where are the pilots? Why are you hiding in the tickets? <laughs> now, they came up, the champion, the Philistine of God, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, unfortunately for Goliath that day, and David had them. <gasps> Unfortunately for her, that day, Goliath had the mockeries. We have men, satanic champions, children of the devil, who are mocking at our Jesus, who say that our Jesus is a bastard, that our Jesus is a fornicator, Goliath once said the same thing and he continued saying it, he kept saying it and God seemed to be stranded that day and those days. God couldn't do anything, not that God is powerless, but where is a man that we collaborate with him? No soldier, all the men that were in military uniform were actually impersonate. They just grab military uniform and put it on their body. They were no real soldiers. You are not a soldier until you are a soldier at heart. Until you are a soldier in character, in attitude, in integrity, in holiness, in righteousness of Jesus Christ. It's not just putting on Christian name, Christian badge, a name from the Bible. No. You are just an impersonate. It's an impersonation. You are not a soldier. In the day of battle, when the battle array will be arranged as it is in our time right now, the battle array is here. Hell is challenging the church in Nigeria. He said, produce your champion. It should be army against army. We have our army already. Church, where is your army? Bring out the people who have been training and training over the years. Jesus Christ will look at the church like this. He would hardly find any soldier in Jesus who can endure hardness. As a good soldier of Christ. Well, David had it, and that was the day the game changed. That was the day God, when God found a man that ran into the army, he was a civilian before, he had joined the army as a rogue into the army. God nodded his head and said, I will tell the giant of the enemy that it is not size that makes a man a giant. One with crowd is not the majority. One with the multitude of human beings is not the majority. It is one with God that is the majority. One with God, the majority. Not one with multitude. No. No, verse 24. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, that's Goliath, fled from him, and were so afraid. Have you seen it now? They were so afraid. Who produced this kind of people? Which soldier produced this kind of soldier? That in the battle, where the matter matters, in the field, not in the church, everybody can dance and clap and sweat. Everybody can say, Hallelujah, praise God, and the battle comes. It is in the battlefront, in the battlefield, when the battle runs a bridge, that one knows who actually is a soldier. Well, I have seen warriors. In Christ Jesus, 
who battled cancer and they overcame. They overcame the vampire called cancer, the devourer. They wrestled with cancer with the help of the Holy Ghost. They are victors today. You can also be a victor. That's why I'm talking to you. This is in time. Satan has brought out the army soldiers. He has been training over the centuries. They are out now to contend with us. I have seen men who battled, women who battled and wrestled with terminal chronic diseases called diabetes. Doctors said it is incurable. They overcame. You see now? You know, hallelujah, seven times. Anybody can shout that one. Come to the battle, let's check you up. Come to the war front. Come to the war zone. If you are a soldier indeed, it is in the battle that it will show. That's where it will show. The men of Israel, the army of God, were so afraid. The one man was not afraid. David. Just a newcomer in the army. He was not afraid. I am looking to check to know what God did in the heart of this new, you know, uh, recruited uh, uh, soldier boy. This soldier boy. He was not afraid. He was going from camp to camp and all of that, asking questions. Why is Nigeria like this? Why is our family like this? Why is our kindred like this? Why is everybody, why is everybody urinating? Why is nobody getting, why is our guest ladies not getting married? Why is everybody poor here? Why, why, why on time that he was making inquiries? He just joined the army, but he wanted to know what to fight and what not to fight. How many years have you been in the church? Have you asked any question? Have you proved anything? Even about your own destiny. As old as you are, you cannot even tell where God is going with your life. You cannot even tell what God wants to do with your destiny. What kind of human being are you? As soon as they did run into the army, he began to ask questions. Why is nobody prospering in this family? Why is it that if at the age of 30, 35, 40, somebody will die here? Why? Why your timely death here? He was there. That's the way. That's the way it is. Sir. It is not my here. We don't know what to do. David said, "No. I will change the status quo." And he actually did. Everybody was quaking in their boots. Their helmets were falling away. They were hiding in the bush and in the thicket inside the caves because of the oppressions of the enemy because of the harassment and the embarrassment of the enemy i have seen ladies i have seen ladies i have seen men who overcame the demon of barrenness and impotency i have seen men break through with the help of jesus through the garrisons of wickedness through the garrisons of, of a cultural, traditional limitations, they broke it and became a force to reckon with. Why are you quaking in your boots? Did Jesus call you to be a civilian or to be a soldier? You don't even know your calling. Your call or calling is equivalent to the calling of a soldier. In fact, yours is more tedious and more serious than the physical soldier's you know, because the physical soldiers battle, they fight and wrestle with their flesh and blood. They throw bombs to kill flesh and, bomb, uh, and, and blood, okay? They shoot AK-47 and all of that to kill and destroy flesh and blood. But you and I, our calling is not to kill flesh and blood, but to deal with principalities and powers innumerable innumerable numbers of invisible invisible wicked spirits 
cruel spirits, determined spirits. What kind of bomb? What kind of training do you think you need to be able to make it a warrior, a finisher at the end of the day? You can't continue like this. So you need to change. You need to drop your courage, your carelessness, thinking that Jesus Christ just called you so that uh, he will provide this up for you, uh, uh, heal your sickness, uh, that Jesus is just there to be your servant, you know, your boy, boy. Uh, Jesus is not doing anything but to make sure that you're always happy. What are you talking about? Jesus had battle to fight, and he needed army, army, and not army. Well trained, and trained, and prepared, and endowed army of spirit-filled men and spirit-filled women that we go out there to face the glory of the end time challenges. Look at the giants of political upside downness. Look at the giant of economic meltdown. Look at the giant of unknown sicknesses and diseases. You go to hospitals now, nowadays, to pray for the sick. You see people that are turning into skeletons. They are just dying. You ask them, what's the name of the sickness? They, they will tell you that. Doctors say they don't know. In the beginning, it was not so. But in this end time, it is so. You cannot be a civilian and survive in the marketplace. You will rather become a Christmas goat. <laughs> you can't be a civilian and survive in South Africa, in Ghana, in Cameroon, in Uganda, in Britain, in Germany. You can't be a civilian and survive there. You have to be a soldier. And a soldier enough to be able to survive. Amen. Well, let me touch verse 25 and I'll take our way. I'll stop there and give you the outline and then I'll be through with you. I'm sure you are beginning to get the point. Get tired. I want you to get tired of being a civilian. You cannot, nobody will, nobody will know you live and die. If you remain a civilian. You, you will not be counted in at all. Paul said, I have fought the good fight. Paul challenger, he said, fight the good fight. I have fought the good fight. He said to us, fight the good fight. He called it good fight. It is a good fight for us to fight. Fight for your right. Fight for your dominion. If you don't have dominion, you will be dominated. You will be oppressed. Satan will sit on your neck, on your head, until he crushes you. You better draw the carriage and run into the army and run into the training and get the ammunition and know how to use them. Allow him to teach your hands to walk and your fingers to fight. Verse 25, and the men of Israel said, okay, the major generals, the generals, I hope you are catching the point, the generals, the general overseers, the chief founders, the senior apostles are now talking to recruits with urine all over their trousers inside the bush. And those men said to David, Have you seen this man that has come up? <laughs> he said, Have you seen this man that has come up? In Nigeria, let me let me paraphrase it. Have you seen this election that have come and passed? See, we couldn't do anything to know. We prayed and God did not answer because it is the prayer of the righteous that availeth much. 
Where is righteousness in the body of Christ? Where is it? We pray at our prayers. We pray. We pray. Have you seen this economic murder? Have you seen the lack of cash everywhere? They will say, yes, I have seen you, I have seen. Have you seen the untimely death in this family, in this kindred? Have you seen it? Have you seen my mom, but this is 25 years, no child, no baby is entering here? Have you seen it? He said, I have seen it. He said, surely to defy Israel, you see, come up. Have you seen it? All the programs of her politically, military, paramilitary, all the arrangement of hell right now all over the nations and in our nation the target is the church. It is to defy the church. Not to edify. To defy the church. The target is the church of Jesus Christ. And you are enjoying your civilian shift. <laughs> Today we have Stylish preachers. Men of God who rob Jericho. Are you sure you, 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 you can you carry Jericho into battle? Which soldier, physically speaking, ever robs Jericho in time of war? Just as people talk about Bollywood and Nollywood and Hollywood, I think we have entered into church wood. I think it's church wood now. The battle is now in the woods. And you know wild boars, you know baboons, you know chimpanzees, you know anacondas, you know mighty pythons, you know giant cobras, you know the things you see in the woods. You can't be stylish. You can't be delicate. You can't be soft. You can't survive like this. Imagine how stranded God of Israel, the universal, the commander in chief of the universal armed forces. Imagine how stranded Jehovah appeared that day. Goliath was insulting God. There is no word here. There is no God in Israel. Let you know what here it Mary Magdalene is Jesus' girlfriend. People are saying it to our Jesus today. And there is no major general, no general, no colonel, no brigadier in the army of the cross, in God's daughter Barak, to confront this Goliath. With life, with correct life, lifestyle, with the weapon and the power of righteous living, with prayer of the righteous that are much. It's to defy Israel. He say, "Come up, and they shall be." And it shall be that the man who killed him, the king will enrich him hmm, with great riches. And we give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Do you know the meaning of making your father's house free in Israel? Eh? You will no longer pay tax. Anybody that will rise now to become the kind of soldier that David became. Anybody that will rise to become the kind of soldier that Daniel became. Anybody now that will stop playing games in the church and they rule in the army of the cross, the army that sheds no blood, and they rule in this army. Is that clear? After the order of a Gideon, after the order of a Deborah, Mm -hmm. After the order of Mordecai, who refused to bow to him, it doesn't matter the promotion the king gave him. 
Everybody bowed. Mordecai said, I won't bow. People said, why? House of Sedeth passed beer that everybody should bow to a man. Mordecai said, I am a Jew. I am not a Jew guy. We don't bow to him, man. What you may call ordinary, ordinary dead man held a prime minister to ransom and later finished him in the gallows he built for Mordecai. That was where they hung him. That's where they later hung him. God identify with this man. Why is God far from us? Why? Because righteousness is far away. Justice is far away. Truth has fallen in the street. Men of God now are called men. Men of God are fornicators and adulterers. We are like fishes uh, with money in his mouth. How can you confront sin and sinners? And for information, coin in the mouth of a fish was a wrong diet for that fish that Peter caught. How manage that a fish was trying to feed on money, feed on dollars, feed on naira, feed on sephars, and other currencies? Jesus said, restore that fish. Collect the money from the mouth, drop the fish so that the fish can fulfill its ministry. How can we confront the heralds of our time? How can we confront the pilots of our time? How can we confront the Herodias of our time? How can we confront the Delilahs of our time? Tell me, how can we confront the Nebuchadnezzar of our time? Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, Mishak Shereka Abadnego said, let it be known to you. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar. They did not put his excellency there. They said, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, oh, God, soldiers. They said, be known unto you that whether God comes to save us or he did not save us, we will not bow to this useless image that you have made. They folded their hands like this. And God did not come up until they threw them into the fire. That was when God came. If you read in, uh, the book of Hebrews chapter 11, some were also thrown into the fire. God did not come. Fire consumed their flesh. But their soul is resting in the bosom of Abraham today. To a novice and a spiritual ignorant, you may think, ah, I see now nah, they are boasted. But they are weak. Excuse me. In their weaknesses, they were much strong. In what you may call a labor wickedness. That was actually their strength. It takes strength to stand and withstand the Nebuchadnezzar. It takes strength of character for a Jew in captivity to stand in the place of righteousness in a strange land. That was no weakness at all. It was strength built in them over time. It took strength for, for uh, people of God in Babylon saying we will not sing the Lord's song in a strange land. It takes strength to say so and stand by it. Don't think that these people are weak. Christians are not weak. They are not weak. When you see a Christian on his knees, and is crying with broken heart. That person is employing the most powerful weapon in the entire universe. That person you see. The posture may look weak. You may look at him and say, but what is he doing? He's crying like baby, cry, cry, baby. I want to tell you that that kneeling Christian and that crying Christian is employing, is using the most powerful, the most potent we born in the entire universe. That's what the man is wielding there. You better be careful. When a Christian kneels and kneels sincerely and in righteousness and is crying and is groaning, ah, you better be careful.
He may look weak, she may look weak. <laughs> but in that weakness, she shall be made strong. I go away from there. I give you an outline, a rundown, and then we will pray. Numbers 32 6. Numbers chapter 32. Verse 6. And Moses said unto the children of God, and to the children of Reuben, Shall your brethren go to war? And shall you sit here? Shall war be raging up and down in our nation against the, the, the church of Jesus Christ and Christianity? And, and, and you are robbing his stick? Shall your brethren go to war? Some of your brethren are in war with divorce. And marital crisis. Some of them are into tragedies. They are crying. They are crying. Shall your brethren be in war front? And you are here watching football? Shall your brethren go to war? Shall your brethren be in the war front? Some of them under torture and torment of demons. And you are here as if nothing is at stake? Verse 7, and wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord had given them. Why are you discouraging your brethren? If you remain a civilian, you become a discouragement. If you remain a civilian in time of war in your family, in your, even in your own health, in your own life, in your own career, in your handwork, in your artisanship, you, you will become a bundle of discouragement even to the neighborhood. Who looks at you as a Christian? Who think and thought that, ah, this one is a spiritual soldier in the day of battle like this? You will become a discouragement to them. That's why you need to wake up now. You don't know how your neighbors look at you. You don't know how your colleagues in the office look at you. Because of the way you carry yourself, they have heard. That you are a Christian, supposedly that you are a, a soldier. In time of battle, they will come to you with their challenges. They say, Excuse me, why in the, in the battle, can you help us? And then you don't have anything to offer them. And the word of God is saying, Why are you a discouragement to your brethren? Why are you a pretender? Why? Well, Isaiah 21, 15. It will be good for me to show you Isaiah 21, 15. Let me add 14 and 15. Isaiah 21, 14, 15. The inhabitants of the land of Tema brought water to him that was thirsty. They prevented with their bread him that fled. I don't want to touch that, just to give a background to what I want to show you. For so they fled from the sword. From the drawn sword and from the bent bow, and from the grievousness of war. Do you know the light? I would like you to glean from it. What is making people pull back from joining the army? War is always grievous. Both sides suffer damages. Nobody escapes from war. Nobody benefits from war. 
but war must be fought. Satan does not listen, he doesn't hear a begging. Satan, in his vocabulary and dictionary, he doesn't know, please now. Satan does not know, it, so it must be war. And the truth of the matter is that war is great vows. Look at people running away now from the military, they are running away from the army. Some of them are retiring, some of them are running away. They don't want to be soldiers again. Why? Because they are running away from the drawn sword. And because war is grieved out, that somebody must still fulfill that ministry of being a soldier, standing in the gap, defending the territorial integrity of the church. Everybody knows, hell and heaven knows. Heaven and hell knows that war is great. But David did not run away. Gideon did not run away. Abraham did not run away. He rather trained 318 in his house to be competent and combatant enough to face drawn swords and rattling arrows and javelins. They face them headlong just to defend the inheritance that God has given to them. Are you part of the company that are running away from the army, that is running away, running away, because, of, uh, because war is grievous? So who then will stand on the Lord's side in this end time? Nobody is running away from the camp of the enemy. The devil tells them to eat live, live frog. They eat. Eat live frog. Some of them, ate, they ate it. Eat a snake, live snake, they will eat it. Drink the blood of a fowl, they will drink it. Go and have sex with a dead uh, woman, they will go and do that. And yet, nobody is running away from the army of Satan. Why are we running away from the grip of space of war? Why? Why? Well, in summary, I wish I had the whole time with you. Marks of a civilian. Are you listening? Marks of a civilian now. Number one. Soldiers are disciplined. Civilians are not disciplined. Soldiers are trained to drink water in measure, eat food in measure. They, they sleep with one eye closed, one eye open. Civilians sleep with their two eyes closed. That's how to know that you are a civilian. You sleep with your two eyes closed. You don't drink water in measure. You don't eat food in measure. You sleep anyhow and wake up anytime. Civilians are murmurers and complainers. Soldiers don't complain, they don't murmur. Words, order, instructions are given. Their motto is obey the last order. They don't murmur, they don't complain. Anytime Jesus Christ or elders gives you instruction that this is the mind of God for you for the hour, or a command, and then you fold your face, you murmur, you complain. Verily, you are a bloody civilian. Soldiers don't murmur, they don't complain, they obey the last order. Civilians are backsliders. 
those that are backsliding from the faith. I hope we know when a well trained army leaves the army, the training still remains in him. So when they backslide, they backslide from the faith. He or she can still quote the Bible. Some of the Bible he or she memorized is still there. He can use it to fight anybody that comes to rescue him or her. It's a very dangerous thing. Having tasted the power that is to come, and then you backslide. So remedy your life and situation will be terrible. It will be too difficult. Every backslider is no longer a soldier. Are you a backslider? Have you been confessed at Jesus? You tell everybody how Jesus dealt with you, how he didn't treat you well, and so you've left the land that flows with milk and honey. You are now back to Egypt. Ah, it is Kukumba garlic. Licking your fingers in this end time. Civilians can be street fighters, but they are not warriors. They can't go to war. Street fighter is different from, from warrior. How to know that you are a civilian is when you are fighting each other inside the church. The person you are fighting is not actually the common enemy. That's not the enemy. Jesus asks us to fight. Go outside now, go to motor parks now, go to places. You see street fighters throwing punches. Ah, you think they are powerful until they go to war. Street fight is different from going to war. You fight in committee meeting, you fight in the choir, you fight in the prayer room. We fight for position, we don't fight for truth, we fight for ourselves to defend our position. We fight to make sure that no fight and nothing is missing. Everything should enter into our pocket. You are a powerful street fighter, but you are not a soldier. You are a bloody civilian. They are street fighters. But take them to war. You will now know the difference between street fighter and a well-trained soldier. Civilians are busy bodies. I know a young man who joined the army from our, my place. He was totally sold out to that calling. He doesn't come home year to year. He's not part of any civilian affair at all. He's not. The traditional rule of our community signed for him himself, signed his death warrant. That young man signed his death warrant to, and declared himself property of the federal government of his nation. That this one is getting married, this one is having her trad in, in the compound, in the kindred. Nobody talks about uh, where is he, let's call him. They can call the traders and call the civil servants. Everybody should come home now. Nobody calls him home. Are you still interested in civilian affairs? You say you are a soldier, you still watch Kono? You still watch, you still visit porn sites? Ah! No man that worried and tangled himself with the affairs of this world, that he may please him, who are called him to be a soldier. Why are you entangling yourself with civilian affairs? Being called to be a soldier? You sleep with your two eyes closed, it's wrong. No discipline at all. In your eating attitude and sleeping attitude, your study attitude. No discipline in the way you handle money. You are a bloody civilian, you are not a soldier. They are busy bodies. Civilians are time wasters. Acts 17, 21. In that scripture, they said every day they gather to, 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 
discuss the latest. To discuss the latest. Act 17. Church 1. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else. See now. Spent their time in nothing else. But able to tell or to hear some new thing. Soldiers, they don't behave like this. Have you studied your Bible enough to be squandering such precious time as this every morning? People will take their bed, eat their food, and then they will gather around the midst of mass here. And then they gather either to tell or to hear some new thing. We soldier will do that in time of war. When Philistines are putting the battle in array, when evil forces are putting the battle in array, army against army, children of God are busy spending time doing nothing, over talking, over jesting, over joking, over eating, over dressing, over gathering wealth, and even over sleeping. Civilians are uncircumcised in heart. That's how to know them. You will know the uncircumcised when things go spiritual. When things go spiritual, you will know the uncircumcised. Declare Holy Communion, the church will have overflow. Declare fasting and prayer, everybody, the church will run empty. When you say pray, when you are a man of God or leader that says prayers, you say prayer, you will have overflow. When you tell them things are not the way it should be in this nation, let us pray at least five hours. Let's bring out five hours every day to pray. Your church and the ministry will run empty. That's how to know bloody civilians. They are all circumcised. One, two, three minutes. They lack words to pray with. They are dry. Prayers will become like punishment. But they can dance the band very well. Anytime things go spiritual, hmm, that's when you know the soldiers from bloody severe. Civilians hate instructions. Proverbs 5, 12 to 13. They hate instructions. The soldiers are men that have been instructed. For you to be a sniper in the army, a sniper that never misses target, you must be instructed and you must obey instructions. You must obey them. For you to be in the intelligent unit, intelligent unit, People that spy the land, they teach you, it is by instructions from instructors, that they will not tell you how to do the work of a spy without being caught. How to mix up with the people, disguise and be like them, and get the information you need and bring it to the decision room. When they draw the plans, to know the strength and weaknesses of the place they want to attack. Instructors do the job. They dish out instructions. But no bloody civilian takes instructions. They hate it. Sit down, he stands up. Stand up, he sits down. Don't go out, he goes out. Come in, he goes out. You can't try that in the army. It's not done in the army. But we do it to Jesus. First Corinthians 10 7. Civilians rise to eat, dance, and play. 
Just to rise, eat, dance, play. First Corinthians 10, 7, you will see that. Civilian showman challenge attitude, MO 6, 3 to 6. They show non challenge attitude. They show it. Civilians cannot handle ammunition. In fact, you know it is a, a treasonable offense. You may, you may get into trouble to the point of death. To, if you are found carrying AK-47, AK-49, up and down in the street or road as a civilian, from where did you get the power, the license, and the audacity to do so? Civilians are always harmless. They are not armed. In the day of battle, not, not even a catapult to shoot at the enemy. And even if you dare touch an ammunition, forces will come against you and say, how dare you touch bomb? Very dangerous. Who is civilian is trying to touch bomb? Grenade, bazookas, buffers, rangers. These ammunitions of mass destruction. You are arrested. If you are not a soldier and you are trying to use the blood of Jesus, you will be arrested. You will be attacked by hell. If you are trying to use the name of Jesus, when you are not converted and saved by Jesus, men that tried it in the Bible paid dearly for me. Get out in the name of Jesus. The demon said, Jesus we know, Paul we know. Then who are you? They pounced on them. The man pounced on them, sorry, and tear all their clothes. Seven deliverance ministers that went to deliver a man returned back from office stuck naked. That's what happens when you are a bloody civilian and you are trying to touch ammunition. You are trying to tell the devil as it is written in the word of God. You want to command things to happen. You'll be arrested. Though. For you to be able to use all the ammunitions that God has provided for us. The privilege of prayer. The blood of Jesus that redeems. Lots of promises and lots of confidence that he made with us. The power of righteousness and holiness. In Christ Jesus. For you to use them and it will work, you must be a soldier who takes instructions. I will stop here. Some other time, if God allows, I'll bring maybe some parts part two, part three, part four of this instruction. But for now, let me save your time, save your data, save everything. I summarize it. Ponder on what you have heard. Are you a soldier? Are you a police? <laughs> Are you a vigilante? Eh? Is there any vigilante of the cross? Is there any? Can you show me any? There's nothing like paramilitary in, the, in, the, in God's other barrack. No para, anything. You have to be a soldier. No? Look at the Philistines putting their army in a ring. Look at their champions appearing, political military, judicial champions. Look at their judges. Where are judges from the side of Jesus Christ to counter the judges from hell? Where are they? When you go to the judiciary, you see giants. And there is no giant, no champion from the church. We have not produced any to give to Jesus. 
Yet you are counting 5,000 sitting capacities and 25,000 sitting capacities. All bloody civilians. If you are a soldier, show it now. If you are well trained and prepared and endowed and empowered, show forth. Shine forth. Manifest now. The insult is getting too much. The abuse is getting too much. The oppression is getting too much. The media knights are dealing with us. Let champions from Zion arise. Let saviors from Zion arise. Can you remove this Jericho now and be a soldier? Soldiers, they don't paint lipstick, they don't paint any on their lips, they don't paint their nails. Who raise you like this? You are just a street fighter, you are not seen war. Can I ask you to talk to God now? You say, no, who am I? Just look at me now. What kind of message is this man preaching? I tell you. I've showed you one or two, three marks of a civilian, busy body. You don't take instruction. You don't obey the commander in chief, the captain of our salvation. How many instructions have Jesus Christ given to you? How many did he obey? You are not righteous. See what you do in the dark. See what you do in the dark. See the kind of thing, iniquity and wickedness you commit. How many abortions? See what you do. And you see one God to identify with you. To show himself mighty among those that are sitting down in the church, warming benches, dancing band and sweating. Ah. Jesus Christ said, No soldier, no king will go to war until he sit down first. And check the kind of army he has, how competent and combatant they are. It's God. Jesus said, I'm not going to war. No, 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 no. Until I'm sure of the caliber of soldiers that churches have given to me. What kind of soldier are you that you cannot uphold the banner of righteousness in that office? What kind of soldier of the cross are you? Who raised you like this? That you cannot uphold the power, banner of righteousness and holiness in the strange land where you are. What kind of soldier are you? What kind of ambassador are you? What kind of representative are you? Who raised you so delicate like this? You are so breakable, you are so fragile, you are not rugged and dogged. Hoshai told Absalom, he said something that will end with it. He said, all the military strategies you are drawing on this board can't work. That's what Hoshai told them. Absolutely. He said, this thing you are saying can't work. He said, you know your father and his men that they are warriors. <laughs> they are like bears robbed of their cup. If you meet a bear or a lioness robbed of her cup, that's the end of the news for you. He said, who shall I say to Absalom, you are not a stranger to your dad. You know your dad, that he and his men are chaffed. They are chaffed in their mind like beer robbed of his corpse. That's the heart of a warrior. That's the heart of a soldier. This man war wars. To the point that God said, you cannot build house for me, David, for you have shed much blood on it. You can't build for me. He said, David, you are, you are a bloody man. You shed so much blood. That man never lost a battle. He did not withdraw, withdrew from the army because of the grievousness of war. Why are you running away now? Why are you turning your back? Are you abandoning the captain of our salvation in the battle? Who and who will Jesus use now to confront those who say that Jesus Christ is a bastard? And all the generals and the brigadiers and major generals and colonels in the army of the cross. Nobody's, nobody has replied that be Goliath. 
Nobody have replied to the Herodians. Nobody have spoken to the Herods yet. I would like you to spew out that coin in your mouth so that your mouth can be free to do the job God created you to do. God said, the Levite, the priest, the men of God, the law of truth is in their lips. The law of truth. And the law of truth is that truth fears no faces. Truth does not play partiality. The law of truth is that truth is ever fearless. Truth is not fearful. That's the law of truth. Truth will face you, not insult you, honor to whom honor, custom to whom custom, but truth will tell you the truth. Pray. If you can pray. If you cannot pray, I pray. Lord, I commit your children into your hands. Thank you for blessing us today. Max, the max of the city. Deliver us. Deliver us. From impersonation. Impersonation. We wear military garments. We wear their cap. We always inside their uniform. We wear their boots. We put on the belt. We look like Christians, but we are not. We look like soldiers, but we are impersonates. We are just impersonating this thing. We are no real. We are fakes. We are pretenders, Lord. Have mercy on us. Forgive your church. Why are we breaking on our boots now? Because war is grieved out. Yet Abraham fought it. Paul fought it. Daniel went to war for you. Mordecai went to war. Job fought wars. Wars, yes. With Satan himself, not even with the demons. And they won. And all the diadem. And the crowns, the warning battles, all of them they put on your head, Lord. And you are giving us opportunities in our own time and generation to stop being civilians, to be soldiers and soldiers indeed, and soldiers and not, even soldiers of the cross. Father, empower your children today. Every one of them who listen to me, who listen, that is still having any courage in order to drop. May the grace of God pull away the carriages from your children and drop it into the hands of the keeper of carriages. Lord, I pray that you shall constrain every of your children, men of God, women of God, Christian politicians, Christian musicians, Christian apostles, Christian doctors and lawyers, and judges and magistrates and engineers and scientists and journalists and nurses and midwives and artisans and businessmen and industrialists and business tycoons, mothers and fathers, they are building them Christian. Lord, let everybody run into the army. Enroll them. The battle is already being put in our way. And it is army against army. Father, please help us. So stop being bench warmers. We need to do exploits in our time. Bless your people. Convert this message into bread of life. Let it be light unto their path. Let it open the heavens over them. Open the heavens over them. Wider and wider. And help your children. Heal their diseases and sicknesses. So, Father, touch those areas. Remove uh, chronic uh, cases and terminal diseases and sicknesses. Father, put your arm, reveal your arm, and pull out calamities, tragedies, sorrows, and shame from your children. Bless them and make them a blessing. Heal them and make them healers. Deliver them and make them deliverers. Save them and make them saviors from Zion. Let them save and continue to save other souls by the reason of your help and anointing. 
Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, I have prayed. Amen. And amen. God bless you. If the word you have heard bless your life, I like you to put it into work. Put it into work. Stop being a civilian in a time like this. David became what he became the day he ran into the army. That was the beginning of his history. When he was a civilian, he couldn't do the things he did when he joined the army. Join the army that sheds no blood. God bless you. Till God enables me to meet you here next week, bringing forth the word of life to you. I say, remain blessed, be careful, be sober, be vigilant. Remain prayerful. Remain prayerful. Let the Lord keep you. Protect you. Cause the light of his countenance to shine upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. We believe you have been blessed by these instructions. For further inquiries or counsel, please contact Vale of Ibon Seed Time and Harvest Revival Labels, Ogidi, Anambra State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 081 00 950 133. Or 081 02 46 1720 or 081 157 606 73. Email more sure word of prophecy at yahoo.com. Gmail more sure word of prophecy 77 at gmail.com. Website www.veilofhebron.com. May the Lord grant you grace to walk in the light of the truth you have received in Jesus' name. Amen.